Welcome everyone to this episode of The Pulse. And we're excited about our guest today for a lot of reasons. You know, I'm a Philly guy, Philly sports fan, and he is long time associated with our champion Eagles. I'm never going to stop calling them champions, but he's he's more than that. Long time Eagle, performer, magician. Uh, they're making a, a, a movie about his life. Uh, he's touring around and he's got a tremendous story. We are joined on The Pulse today by John Doran Boss. Welcome, sir. Yes, baby, yes. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And as a longtime Eagles fan, my first response was, so the first Eagle we're going to have on is the long snapper? That means right now that we are trendsetters, baby. Come on, <laughs> we're setting up. I'm going to... I'm going to pave the way for the rest of the guys. We do a lot of research when we're about to talk to people. And so I knew of Long Snapper. I knew of Magician. I knew of all your talent. I didn't know as much about all of your story. You know, so if we can share some of that, let's, let's start how you kind of got into this. Because you're, there were challenges even as you were young as developing John Dorenboss. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, life, life is... Uh, what we go through, how we experience it, is make it makes us who we are. And so, um, when I was 12 years old, uh, I lived in a Brady Bunch family. My dad was my hero. Uh, played catch with him every day. Coached my teams. President of Little League. My mom was a hero for for many different reasons. She volunteered at the school. I'm not going to say I had a learning disability, but learning for me has always been really hard. In my reading comprehension, I've always struggled. So, my mom volunteered at the school, and the reading program created like this a different way to learn and all the cool kids like my mom. So guess what? All the cool kids started to like me as I got older. And so, you know, my dad kind of being the president and, and the man of the house and showing me what it's like to be a man. And then my mom showing me that you can be different. You don't have to be good at everything like everybody else, but you still have a purpose, a place, and you can still be wanted and contribute. Mm -hmm. And so both, both were, were huge influences in my life. Uh, and then when I was 12 years old, I came home and discovered that my father had murdered my mother out of absolutely nowhere. I, I go back to that, and I, I guess I apologize for starting there, but I think that it's important because that was an early start for a young man, and yet you kind of became you. Like, was that the foundation right there to start shaping the strength, the personality, the person that you became later? That was a, a pretty significant event at, a, at an age to where you are young enough to completely understand and grasp the severity of the situation, but also young enough, or I should say old enough to understand it and young enough to still be influenced in a positive way that your life can still go up or down. Right. And so, you know, my grandparents who helped raise me, my aunt who ended up getting custody of me on my mom's side, helped raise me. And then I went through eight months to a year of the most intense therapy you could possibly imagine during that time. And that right there is what I think I owe ultimately what I'm most proud of in my life. And that's just my happiness. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to, to be in this world and I'm happy to continue to, to try and do things. So John Dornbos, the strong person and personality started there, but right around that time, around that age, that's when you also started with magic or performing or when that's kind of started happening for you too. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Wow. Bad timing. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's when, <clears throat> excuse me. Gosh, you know what? <clears throat> Hold on. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I was actually 12, 13 years old, uh, and I had moved down to Southern California, and then I went back to Woodenville, Washington, where I was living, and I stayed with a baseball coach. I made the Little League All-Star team, so I traveled back to, to play in that tournament. And when I was staying with the coach, his son was friends with a kid who was a magician, so that kid came over uh, and did like a 30-minute show, and it was amazing. And then he took me to a magic shop. His name was Michael Groves. He bought me a, a, a book and a, and a trick. And I just practiced it. Here's what I figured out. That for me, magic was never about performing when I was that age. Mm. To me, when I would sit down and shuffle cards or I would do a trick, it was the only time the world quieted. It was the only time I didn't think about my dad going to prison, losing both my parents, you know, kind of selling everything right and going into a temporary foster home for eight months, nine months, 10 months, whatever it was, moving down and in with my aunt and just having a complete life-changing uh, year. I would sit down, I would hear the cards riffle, I would shuffle and the world quieted and that was my time to be a kid. That talent kind of coming out was, was almost therapy for you. It, it took my mind away and it taught me that something can be very, very difficult, but if I just keep working on it and just keep practicing over time with discipline, right? You're gonna get good at it. So John Dorenbos, the performer actually happened before John Dorenbos, the football player. When I got into junior high, my nickname was Ogre. So I was like the six foot, 200 pound kid. Then I went into my freshman year in high school 
And I was still a pretty big kid for high school. And my buddy Kevin Johansson said, hey, you should play football. And I was like, no way, dude. Football's for dorks. I like magic. Right. And he's like. <laughs> yeah, right. Things and you I'll, I'll, Yeah, right. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, you can hit that guy and not get in trouble. <laughs> well, that actually sounds pretty cool. Like, I didn't really understand the game. I just knew go get the ball, go hit the guy with the ball, don't get in trouble. So think about this. I had the perfect combination. I had a lot of, a lot of, uh, you can say anger, resentment, betrayal, all these feelings that kind of harbor up just negative emotion, right? That I just needed to get out somehow, some way that I had accumulated over the last couple of years. So now I could hit you during the day, not get in trouble, get out my aggression. And then I would go home at night. I would light a candle. Yes, I would listen to Yanni track number nine, Felista on repeat. Okay. And then I would just shuffle and I kind of had this balance of being like a gladiator during the day and then kind of just chill Zen guy at night with cards. Next on The Pulse, John Dorenbaugh shares how things just kept falling into place, at least for his NFL career. The scout got on the megaphone and said, Dorenbaugh, why are you running? Um, I was told I got to run a 40-yard dash, sir. You are not fast, nor do we care. <laughs> 